On February 24, 2022, the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, surprised the world and invaded Ukraine. Regardless of how you feel about the invasion, whether or not you believe that it is justified, one thing is for sure. This war is going to have a lot of tangible impacts on Nigeria and since we are all Nigerians that still live in our homeland or at least have not been able to make it out of the country yet, it is going to have a tangible impact on us too. In fact, it has already begun. Unsurprisingly, the very first Nigerians to be affected by the Russian invasion of Ukraine are the ones who actually live in the invaded country. It is estimated, as at the start of the conflict, that there are about 14,000 Nigerians living in Ukraine. A lot of these were students studying in the country. Naturally, at the start of the invasion, most of them headed towards the country's borders. Some had to trek for more than three days just to get away. And at the borders, the reports were mixed. Some fleeing Nigerians reported that the situation was less than pleasant. Neighboring European countries, like Poland, preferred to accept fleeing Ukrainians. Anyone else who didn't belong to that category was given less than a pleasant treatment. However, some also reported being treated well by the border countries such as Romania and Hungary, and even clothed and fed by citizens of that country. Most importantly though, the event also prompted the government to prepare for the evacuation of its citizens. Now, if you ever find yourself sometime in the future stranded in a foreign country that's being invaded, at least you can rest assured that your government is coming for you. Another key area where the war in Ukraine affects you as a Nigerian is in the area of oil price. Ultimately, thanks to the invasion, Nigerians are going to be paying a lot more for crude oil products. The economics is simple, at least theoretically. Russia plays a huge role in oil distribution all over the world. The country is the second biggest oil exporter in the world behind only Saudi Arabia. Now, due to Russian hostility and sanctions from Western countries on Russia's economy and its oil, oil prices have gone up significantly, reaching a high that hasn't been seen since the economic crisis of 2008. Now, while Nigeria don't actually rely on Russia for its oil imports, the domino effect of such a big oil trading partner like Russia being restricted from the market means there will be less supply for everyone and consequently an overall increase in price of crude oil products. Now, you may be thinking, well, Nigeria gets most of our foreign exchange earnings from oil export anyway, about 90% actually. And if oil price goes up, doesn't that mean a good thing for us? Well, no. You see, despite the fact that we export a lot of petroleum and tend to make a lot of money from it, sadly, we also import way more than we export. So for every gain we make from the high price of oil, we pay for even more by what we spend on it. Now, it should be said that the impact of increased price of petrol may not be felt so hard by Nigerians or even at all thanks to the current subsidy program, which itself is another topic of discussion. But at any rate, other unsubsidized petroleum products like jet fuel, lubricant and diesel, which is now selling at more than 560 naira a litre in some places, are sure to get even more expensive. Thanks to the current fuel scarcity in the country, Nigerians have already faced enough trouble standing in endless queues just to buy fuel for their cars and generators. Sadly, this situation is likely to get even worse not just because of the country's self-generated problems but because of the Russian invasion. Again, despite being the largest crude oil exporter in Africa, Nigeria imports all of its jet fuel. As at this very moment, numerous flights, both domestic and international, are being delayed or grounded as a result. As mentioned earlier, thanks to the subsidy of petrol, we may not know the true consequence of the war on petrol prices. But for other unregulated products like diesel and jet fuel used by airplanes, things may not be so pleasant. Keep in mind, this is the same country where land travel is so dangerous that many people go out of their way to secure flight tickets so as to avoid troubles on land. Kidnapping cases are getting more rampant and if airlines can't operate efficiently or cost effectively, then many Nigerians will have no choice but to brave the troubled conditions of land interstate travel. Russia is among Nigeria's top 10 trade partners. Between the third quarter of 2020 and that of 2021, we imported items from the country that totals a value of 993.38 billion naira. 
To make matters worse, most of this trade happens to be in the agricultural sector, with key products like potash coming from these countries. Potash is a basic nutrient for plants and an important ingredient in fertilizer. Nigerian farmers are already complaining about increased cost of fertilizers and they may have it even worse thanks to this conflict. And then, of course, there's wheat, which Russia and Ukraine both happen to have a huge share of in terms of global production. The war is sure to lead to a significant decrease of global wheat supply. In fact, since the war began, the price of wheat has surged by 100%. This surge will affect the local prices of bread, pasta, cake and other products. If there's something Nigerians don't need at the moment, it is an increase in food prices. Sadly, we may not even have a say on the matter. Lastly, thanks to the huge disruption in global trade caused by this crisis, the Naira, which has been in constant free fall for a while now, may fall even further. Being an import-dependent economy as we are, growing prices of things you import is never a good thing for your economy. Despite numerous programs by the country and the central bank to eliminate this dependency on foreign goods, such as the Brown Revolution program, we are still remarkably far from being safe against suffering from sudden impact from other countries like this one. If there's one thing we've learnt or should learn from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it is that a country should always strive to have more control over its own fate so that it isn't always wantonly exposed to negative consequences caused by things beyond its borders. Will Nigeria ever learn?